Today we're going to get started on our plumbing and our plumber's going to be here soon. Wait a minute, our plumber looks a lot like our framer and our roofer. And part electrician. And part electrician. So what's the plan today, Mr. Thomas? Work on the drain waste vent system. Okay, we're going to start with the drain waste and vent system. Welcome to the crawl space on the Tomarosa. Here's a tour of our DWV system. That's drain waste vent. So starting here with the white PVC, you can see that's a clean out. Uh, that's PVC from there on down into the ground and out to the septic tank. Then we transition to ABS. We have our vertical main stack that rises straight up. And then off to the left is the pipe that goes to the first floor toilet. Over here, the, on, towards the right, we have a two inch line and that goes to the shower, but first there is a branch that goes off towards the washing machine. But otherwise it continues. That's the vent for the shower. And then that's the trap. How do you like your miter box, Stacy? It's a good way to get uh, good square cuts on your pipe. I don't know what smells worse, the glue or the poo. All right, that was the final connection and the drain waste vent system. How do you feel about the system, Stacy? I feel like the Transcontinental Railroad when they drove the Golden Spike <laughs> promontory. Really? And yes. how was that? D-O-N-E. We got our drain waste vent system in, which was a big thing. So we have a main stack here. It's three inch and it's pretty much straight vertical. Uh, there's a lot you can't see underneath the floor here because it's in the crawl space. Uh, there's a clean out and that's where the downstairs toilet goes into and the shower and then over there is where our future washing machine will be. If you look up, that's also where our second floor bathtub ties in. This is the second floor toilet and then over here, this will be where the kitchen sink ties in. This is the second floor bathroom. And over here in the floor, we have the stub out for our clawfoot tub. And then over here in the floor, we have a flange for our toilet. And then the vanity will go right there. Uh, this is the continuation of the main stack from down below. We have a clean out here. And because of the pitch of the ceiling and also we wanted the vent on the back side of the roof, we kind of had to stair step our vent up. Uh, which is another reason we put a clean out here in case we ever had to snake from the top. Here is the spray foam update. We are kind of delayed because of the holiday, so I'm going to check back in in January and hopefully we'll get some type of resolution. So we are continuing to work on the downstairs. In the meantime, because it's winter, which you can tell, we have closed off the upstairs so we use just some plastic and we will let you know what we find out it's a big day on the tomarosa here we got our rough in electrical approved for the downstairs so we can go ahead and finish insulating and get drywall put up but for us it actually took two tries to get it approved so our first inspection failed and I am okay to admit that. It was actually a relatively minor thing. Uh, we'd roughed in all the electrical, but I didn't have all the grounds connected, even if the cables weren't connected to anything else at all. For example, between our smoke detectors, you know, it's just cables uh, to run between them, but the grounds weren't connected. So I had to go back and connect all the grounds, which is the rules, which I did. And the inspector came back and gave us our sticker, just like we would have got in grade school if we passed the test. Gold stars for everybody. Ta-da! 
So we're getting ready to do some plumbing now. Um, since we've had our electrical inspection for rough in approved, we went ahead and we put plywood in this corner of the laundry area. Uh, the, the rest of the bathroom will be drywall, but the reason we did plywood here is because we're going to be surface mounting pipes. Uh, the cold water is going to come up through the floor just like our temporary service does. And it'll have valves and it'll run straight up through. The water heater is going to sit in this corner. And then uh, the hot water is going to come out and it's going to go up through there as well. And we're going to have basically a branch and trunk system. So the pipe will run uh, through the joist here and it'll tee off to the different fittings. When we built the house, we designed it with plumbing in mind, so all the plumbing is in one general area. We have this bathroom here, which is combined with a laundry. We have a bathroom directly above us, and then the kitchen sink is just on the other side of this wall. So the only kind of outlier we have is we do have one frost-free hydrant uh, for outside use in that back wall over there that we'll have to run one line to. But otherwise, all the plumbing is in here. We're pretty much ready. We got all our blocking in with our uh, copper stub outs. We're going to be using a combination of copper and PEX. Uh, we got other blocking in. This is for our wall mounted sink. We have a wall mounted sink here. We got blocking for the kitchen sink stub outs over there. And we have the shower valve installed. That was actually a little bit trickier than uh, I thought, but we managed through trial and error to get it installed and we also installed a grab bar in the shower. To make things easier, we divided up all of our supplies. So Stacy effectively has a plumbing room and an electrical room. It works. Works great. This is worse than some of that electrical wire that's been wrapped up that we got. So we got the main uh, trunk run and we just bought white PEX pipe. I know it comes in red and blue, but we just bought white because that way we only had to buy one roll and it, you can't see it when it's covered anyway. Exactly how many PEX crimp tool kits do you need to put in PEX? At least two, or actually just one that works. The first one we bought, uh, it would over crimp. Uh, it would go too far into our go no go gauge and uh, there wasn't any way to adjust it it only has adjustments for making it crimp even tighter so uh, Virginia went and ran to the hardware store and bought another kit uh, which we did test and did seem to function properly so we'll go ahead and use that and the first kit will return to the store so while Virginia was picking up the other PEX crimping tool, I went ahead and just started roughing in some more lines. I just used colored tape to mark uh, what's hot and cold just to keep track of that. With PEX, if you have to make sharp corners and you don't want to kink it, they have these little plastic brackets. You can see I used two up there uh, where it comes through the floor. Today we get to play with copper. Why do we have to use both copper and PEX? Uh, anywhere the pipe's exposed, it needs to be copper because I'm going to be looking at it. And also within the vicinity of the water heater, you can't have plastic because it'll get too hot. Those are all good reasons. I approve. Okay, what are you looking for again? So it's a uh, female threaded with a barbed nipple and it's in a purple shark bite bag. Oh wait, I 
think I put it right by where I needed it. Oh, okay. Crisis averted. Imagine that. Can you please explain the magic that is soldering? I don't know the magic, but uh, the basics are uh, you have to start with a clean material. So uh, we have wire brush here to uh, clean the copper, get it real bright and shiny on both surfaces. And then you apply a flux, and what the flux does is it uh, protects that clean, shiny surface from oxidizing while you heat it up. And then you have to heat the material up to a point where the solder wire will melt. And then you feed that in and it's actually drawn into the joint by capillary action. And then uh, when it cools, you have a solid, uh, hopefully watertight joint. Look what I made in art class today. It is a balmy four degrees on the Tomarosa this morning, but it is beautiful. Now that we have the copper piping in and connected to the PEX, we're going to go ahead and see if we can get some water out here and pressure test the system to check for leaks. Before we can test our water system, we have to thaw our hoses. Good thing we have our fire breathing dragon on the case. There Stacy goes to our pump house to hook up a garden hose so we can run it through the window to test the water system. I have the crucial task of turning on and turning off the water. This is a frost-free hydrant that we ran through our walls instead of running it through our crawl space. So, so far, that was the only thing that leaked. And it leaked because we inadvertently didn't crimp it. So now we're going to re-energize the system and see if anything else does not work. Well, other than our one little mishap with the outdoor faucet, uh, everything seems to be doing just fine. We haven't detected any leaks. Uh, we've left it pressurized for a few minutes. Uh, we got the air out of the system. So we're going to go ahead and secure this. But because it's winter time, we're going to have to go ahead and drain all the lines too because there's not going to be any heat on in here while we're gone. So now that we've pressure tested the system, we need to drain it. And we'll start by just draining uh, everything we can by gravity, uh, opening the valves that we can. Now we get to use our air compressor to blow out the line. So this is the fitting I have for blowing out the, the lines. It's just a air fitting and then a couple connectors to a garden hose thread and I'll hook that up to the air compressor. I have the regulator turned way down on the air compressor, only about 50 psi. Our plumbing system is a branch and trunk system. So the water comes in through the floor right there from the well and we have a main cutoff valve right there. And then it comes up and then it tees off here and in this corner will be where the water heater is. So that's what these stub outs are for. And then we also have uh, faucets for the washing machine there. And then the water goes up through the ceiling there. It uh, shifts over from copper to PEX. And then we have our main trunk here with the branches. So our main trunk comes through the ceiling here. Uh, we have it tee off. One uh, branch goes to the lavatory here. We have another branch that goes to the upstairs bathroom. We have this branch here that goes to the shower. And then right here is where our kitchen sink will be, and that's where it terminates. Even though we are incredibly busy building our house, we do find time to enjoy life on the farm. We love looking at the wildlife, such as the turkeys and the deer, also owls and the hawks. Already this winter, we've had lots of opportunities to plow snow. And this winter, I actually learned how to plow too. Join us next time as we work on installing our rock wool insulation. 
hopefully have a resolution on our spray foam insulation and move forward on drywall. We'll see you on the Tomarosa. Thank you.